All right, so we got a little time this afternoon. Um, we're gonna work on this again if the rain holds off. We had sunshine, it's thunder, lightning again. We had it up and riding, we're riding around the lawn. We have found one thing. Uh, we're gonna see if we can capture it on camera here, but there is a, there's a clunk in reverse. So we're fine, and once we go in reverse, you know, you go all the way up in here, and it's fairly consistent, and when you're driving, you reverse low speed, you're going, and then there's a whomp, and then whomp, and a whomp. Um, I'm going to put my bet on there might be a broken tooth within the transmission side. So we're going to get this down, and we're going to get into reverse so we can uh, we can capture the sound, and then we got to figure out what uh, <laughs> what's it going to take to do a transmission, and we do have a practice transmission, or at least one that's on this unit mostly stripped down so we can understand what it takes to pull the transmission out. But let's get this down, let's get it started so we can, uh, so we can see what sound it makes. Now it's been starting up pretty well and we're really get, starting to get some of the electrics figured out on here. But let's, uh, we're gonna get on the trail right here so we can go reverse and see if we can hear the clunk. Let's get it out on the trail right here and we'll just get it in reverse. Or if you wanna hop on, put it in reverse. And I found using the brake is nice because it stops the brake there. There's forward. Get that thing. Boom. Boom. Yeah. That's it. I'm sure you heard it. That just boom, boom, boom. It's like something's not fully in gear. So. We gotta figure that out. We can't go on the trail without reverse. All right, so you, you certainly heard it. Somewhere down in there in that transmission only happens in reverse. And there was just, I mean, that was a pretty good clunk there. Um, I don't think when the first one didn't mesh, I mean, we'll see when we get in there. Um, so now the decision, we gotta figure out our plan of attack. Uh, our plan of attack. At least we don't have the plastics on. That was it. Yep. It's dragging and then... And then something catches. It's a fairly simplistic transmission in there as they go because it, there's no, you know, uh, one gear down, five gear up type scenario. It's forward, it's neutral, it's reverse. So it's got to come out, whatever we do. And I've been studying this one to understand how I think the transmission is supposed to come out. As I look at this, I see there's an engine mount down low, a part of it. Um, I've got a mounting bolt up top here. I've got a drain plug down low for it. I don't know what this guy is. And this is where it gets interesting to me. Is the transmission basically bolted to the rear swing arm yep. via this nut and this side? Looks like it. So if that's the case, let's practice on this transmission first, because if we got to do swing arm, we're going to want to make sure we get crafty to strap this one up to the ceiling and like that support the rear end. So let's see if we can pull this transmission, because we're anticipating this is going to be a working transmission that's going to go in there. This bolt is, if you look at this nut on the side, it's, it's got tabs yeah. on it. Locking tabs. So you gotta un, you got to fold those in. Oh, goody. And then, so those are going to break. That's all right. And it's on both sides. Although it looks like some go, like two go into the frame. Like there's a notch here mm -hmm. with a washer with a cutout and just a quick little weld. And then, yeah, those are just... How about this guy? Nope. That one's not part of the transmission? Nope. Okay. Nope. That's just holding... Uh, so we got... That looks like it's... One up oh, top. That's holding this. Okay. It's just It's just a little clip. And then the swing arm bolts, we're going to see if we can start backing those out. And we've also got to get the brakes out of the way. We're kind of in a nice position because the toolbox is right here. Ooh, sweet. All right, we'll start there. 
you start on that side, I will start trying to see if I can get the lower transmission mount loosened up. We, so when I spin that, the whole thing just spins. I don't know if it's going. That inside nut right there, he's going to need the help. So quite quickly we figured out we don't have to take the swing arm all the way out. You've got to loosen this to pull this out of a, a dimple in the transmission that we'll see shortly that helps hold this. So I'm suspecting same thing on the other side. Josh will get the locking washers loosened up. I'll make sure I don't have an ATV come down on my head. Bad day. Bad day. Then we should be moving on. Dumb ways to die. Dumb ways to die. <laughs> All right, so the nice thing is we're not going to have to take the swing arm off. We're not going to have to strap up. We're not going to have to strap up the whole other unit back here. Okay, so to pull this transmission. One more right here. One more up top. Uh, Probably not that one. one. And I think before we do that bolt, we might want to do the brake system. We are going to have to take this to both these bolts are going to have to go because this is uh, around the, it's a, yep. it's holding that, but okay. that's bolted in through both of those and that metal shield right there. Should we do the brake yep. system before yep. we loosen the rest of that up? Yep. Do you think? Okay. Look at the rust on that rotor. Yeehaw. No, hold on. You get that adjustable. It's been, it's been adjustable. Transmission's out. We'll call out this collar because this collar sits on the other side here. And one bolt through bolt up the top goes into the transmission. The bottom one here just has a nut on the back and holds in. I lost the clip. There it is. Goes through the plate. So the back side of this plate goes through, and then you have this cable retention sits on the back side down in there as well. So we'll set this off to the side, and we're going to get some of the grime off this transmission. We believe this is the good transmission. So. What we should do is just unbolt that one, throw this one on. That's, I'm hoping that's the easy path which is kind of why doing this one quick because I'm hoping for a lot of things like not having to take the motor out. We'll have to take the belt system off, but maybe we don't have to do much from there. You lift it out from the far side, which would be the exhaust side. All right, we'll have a little bit of learning, but let's figure it out. Okay, so seat, set this out of the way. These are self-tapping on this aftermarket cover, so we'll take this off. I'll go get our Polaris tool for pulling the clutch and belts off. Are you going to have to pull off the carb? I don't know if we'll have to pull off the carb. Might have to move the air box, but it's nice that we don't have to do rear swing arm. Um, and then brakes, so I will set up and pull off the brake caliper. And looking at this, I will wait to see if we have to do the exhaust, but the exhaust wouldn't be a big deal if we needed to because it's a one bolt, bunch of springs, and probably a bolt down here around the heat shield. Let me get this taken off for now while you take the uh, clutch side off. All right, brakes are off. Nice, they come off easy now having done the rebuild. And I still need to do a pad on here. And I was able to reach down in here to grab the nut on this one with my spanner on the other one I was able to go out from the bottom but I didn't take off the chain guard on here so I had to set down in from the top I still need to take the chain off on this side for the transmission to come out on the other side we've popped the clutch off seals are looking good nice and clean around there doesn't look like a lot of leak and now having run these clutches for a couple of hours, you can see after my cleanup job, that's what's left there from the belt wearing by, but no black chips from the belt. 
Everything has kind of smoothed itself out. Now, I did not do a rebuild job on here, on these springs, on the buttons. That's just kind of how it came. All I did, as you saw, was Brillo pad cleaning up, and it feels silky smooth in there now. So now we'll get the aftermarket plate off the back, and then we'll be, got the, we'll be able to get at the second bolt holding the transmission in. We're going to have to tip this unit up to get at the mount on the bottom of the frame. And then we're really finding out how easy or not this is, but I'm going to say we're 15, 20 minutes into this one, so not bad so far. I'm not hearing anything. So there's one way to find out. Well, I guess there's a couple of ways to find out. <laughs> Let's uh, get a brush. We'll clean everything off we can here. We'll take the uh, um, case saver, I'll call it, off so we can get back behind there. 10 mil. So while we're at this point, this frame, again, the straight frame, this is the hole that I had seen here, the rot that was coming in that we want to make sure we deal with. Looking around the rest of this again now that we have it back up. You wouldn't want to find any new surprises at this point, but uh, actually this is kind of nice to see. There are pinholes in the bottom here, which makes me think we could let moisture out if needed. I haven't noticed pinholes in your A-arms before, but they're here. Fascinating. So I'm going to start cleaning this up with a brush and a wire wheel, see what kind of meets there. And All right, so we've cleaned up the other transmission. Uh, we've been spinning it by hand. Actually, this is really smooth, really nice and smooth. Cleaned it up, a few of those things. So we're going to go ahead and put this one in and see uh, how uh, we're just going to go from there rather than split the other, split the presumed good one. We will end up splitting the known bad one so we can see what's bad in there. So I'm going to see if I can jimmy this one. <laughs> yeah. Jimmy, Jimmy, this one in. I think we've got space. There's the motor mount side. There you go, 45. Get past the shaft there. In, in. And this side's on its dimple. And you should be good for the bolt on that end. So we're starting to put things back together, but our believed to be good transmission, this all came out when we just started training, draining what little oil is in there. So there could be, could be issues at hand. There's a lot of flakes on that magnetic plug there. I've seen the lifter forks on these wear down before and need to be replaced. Hopefully, that's all. Hopefully that's all. But, all right, drained out, we'll get this plug back in. Keep putting things slowly back together here. Hope I don't regret not cracking this transmission. And what we found is while we had everything tipped up, it was really easy to drain the transmission because the drain bolt down here on the bottom is, well, basically all the way on the bottom when you're tipped up. So we'll get this tightened in. And I'm starting to do some prep for some of the welding here. I've got to fabricate a plate. I have been thinking about trying to, this is bigger than I would have liked for just filling with some, some weld. So we'll get a plate on that. So while we're, we have it up here, we still have the chain off and the belt drive system off. I want to get at the petcock. I'm going to take this off. And the idea here is we've got the fuel in the bottom half of the tank so we can do this, but replace this petcock that's fairly standard ATV which I've complained comes out the wrong end with this one from a a Predator 500 Polaris Predator 500 get the petcock flowing in the right way so I can get rid of all of this daisy chain and while we're at it we've got some protective chain we'll put around the fuel line pretty pretty big stuff really as it goes but I do not want to catch a hot fuel line on fire and I have got this nice and warm and soft and malleable just riding around putting on the lawn. So we're going to do that. All right, we did swap out the petcock. Um, didn't catch on camera because it was kind of an all hands because there was more gas in the tank than we thought. So probably lost a half a gallon capturing it in a metal tin when we took out the, the other 
petcock here. Okay. And I'm going to guess rattling around in my tank is the filter that was on the end of this one, but, you know, I'm not going to worry about that. <clears throat> so we've added the um, protective spring along the fuel line, redone the fuel line. Kind of nice with this protective spring on here. You can pinch into the zip tie so it won't um, create slack and sag. And also part of this fuel line from here to just around the bend is also wrapped with aluminum heat tape. So I'm feeling a whole lot better about the run for this. Uh, and the gravity feed for it because we're not looped around the front coming back. So, uh, feeling better about that. Brakes are back on. Transmission's back on. We're going to start getting the belt system back on on the other side and the chain on. But we're going to need this floor to dry up because there's some gas down there. So I will not be, I will not be welding up here anytime soon. Uh, yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> Uh, now on the back of this pad, or the uh, plastic, and you get it in, yeah, you got it all in the groove there, so that's good. Okay. It's not quite lined it up like it's open. Um, I had to do a couple of screws first, and then it would kind of all just, I guess you call it flex back into place, but yeah, it was a little special. All right, so we are basically back to where we started. Uh, here, having done the full transmission swap. 10 mil. Thank you, sir. And having gotten back to where we started, uh, we're going to run out of time tonight before we find out if this transmission's really intact. It felt smooth. Uh, we're going to add oil, so I'm actually going to put the AGL on the frame so I don't forget because I've been riding around and I would, that would happen. I would forget. So here's what we're using. This was what was recommended to me down at the ATV shop. So here we go, a Polaris AGL. I'm gonna set this right there so I don't forget because I've got to get that in the fill cap before I do anything. And having leaked all that gas out when we were doing the fuel line, I need my air filter to dry out because we really filled the air box with gas. And starting to fabricate, and I'll get into more of this next time I come out here, but this is gonna be what I'm gonna weld onto the bottom of the frame. Seal that up. Other than that, new heat shield tape around the box here so we don't burn any of that. So all that's left to do to be back to where we started is to finish putting on our clutch system, which we'll do before everything gets wet this evening. And then we'll hit pause because it's, uh, well, it's raining again. All right, guys, I couldn't leave you hanging uh, not knowing what was going on inside that transmission with the clunk. So before I wrap this one out, uh, before I wrap this one up, I did split the transmission and it, it's, I don't know really how it happens, but here's, here's what it is. There we go. Let me spin that. So again, talking through very simple transmission. I mean, we have forward neutral reverse. We have one lifter ear over here. When you activate, you engage this gear in here and you'll get reverse and there we go it's as if it wasn't fully meshed down in kept spinning spinning because actually it, it just part of these teeth are just bent out to the side created a dead spot so when we were in reverse we would go and then cl clunk cl clunk cl clunk see if i can spin do i see anything on this gear, I don't. But does it look like a difficult fix here? This gear, if I could find this used, one, two, three, four bolts, put it in. Looks to be the only damage that I see. Bearings feel fine. You know, and I'm not finding shavings down in here from this. And that was it. Down here in the oil, even as the oil came out, there's a little bit of ground up, you know, gear in here. But really nothing to speak of. So that was that. So this is where I will park this one. Um, the other transmission working fine in reverse. No issues and all that. So we got lucky just doing the swap and didn't have to tear down the new transmission. It's full of AGL running great. 
this one just missed me we had to get the unit to a point to test it to find out i think we if we were really paying attention rolling it even without it running back we would have found that dead spot but there were so many issues you were just kind of masking things we went around so we'll park this one here but uh we're coming around to getting to the end of this project so next video if i have my act together will really be that debrief video total cost breakdown what do we have left where are we going next um, and see that finished product so next time looking to get the uh really kind of a debrief together you know the finishing of the product what's left from the parts quad you know what do we have left to work with what am i going to do with that um originally we started out we were looking to have two running quads but we just found so much damage across both of them that combining one really made the option the other part of the next coming video we'll have in there is a total cost breakdown everybody enjoys understanding um, at the end of the day, you've seen the labor, you've seen the work, you've seen me go through, go back through, go back through again. Um, but what did it take? What did I actually spend to get it back on the trail? So uh, thanks for watching. If you're enjoying the content, like and subscribe. It does help me out. And stay tuned for the next one. Thanks again.